Hello, I'm River, and welcome to the first episode of the Devil May Cry Bloody Palace board game paint series. In this episode, we will be painting the Empusa models, the lowest level enemy and the most common that you'll be fighting. There are 12 of these models in total, and they will all be sharing the same paint scheme. I begin the process by using my hobby knife to trim down the mold lines and any excess plastic that may appear on the model. It's wise to use the back of the knife to grind down the plastic and sort of strip it away until it's level with the model. I found myself using the sharp end of the knife here and there, which is not a great habit. You'll find the mold lines on these models mostly around the long insectoid limbs as well as along the sides of the body and up the back. There are also mold lines around the bulbous head and the edges of the wings. In my own personal process, I choose to ignore some of the mold lines as they are too inconvenient to reach without risking damaging the rest of the model. Once I have all 12 of the nasty little bugs shaped up, I prime them using Armory Painter's Matte Black Paint Spray Primer. Again, due to their long gangly limbs and their hunched posture, it was difficult for me to coat the entire surface area of the model and had to do a little finessing to make sure that the underbelly was properly coated. I left the models to set overnight and then began the next day with a base coat. The paint I use is from the D&D Monster set by Army Painter. The paint I use to base coat the model is Lich Skin. And plus I don't have too many colors, so the, this large surface area will be what most of the model remains. I recite the mantra and apply two thin coats to create a nice even base coat. I try to be careful and cover as much of the body as I can, including uh, the back of the arms and legs. Once all my models are nice and base coated with the Lich Skin Green, I take out my Frost Blue paint. I'm going to use these to coat the uh, feathered wings of all the Impusa models. I evenly coat each wing, and I'm careful to not have the blue spread to the rest of the body.
When you're done painting all 12 Impulsa's wings blue, the first Impulsa's wings should be dry, and you can go back and go for a second coat to more properly have the blue blocked in. Next, I use Cambrian Crimson in order to color the forearmed claws as well as the back needle-like legs. I'm going off of this image of the Impusa from the game, Devil May Cry 5, in order to select my colors. As you can see, it has blue feathered wings, red claw-like forearms and legs, as well as these black hairs on its head. I'm not going to be coloring the black hairs as I'm going to be sort of using a mix of a, the design of the red impusa along with the regular standard impusa, but more on that later. By the time you finish coating each of the Impusa's extremities in red, the first one should be dry and you can apply a second coat to make sure it's evenly distributed and co uh, covers properly. When it came down to the hairs on the Impusa's head, I decided that instead of going black I thought they looked more like the crystals found on the red Impusa's, which is a different type of Impusa that is in the game as well as the board game Bloody Palace, but they do not have their own unique model. So I did something of a mashup, and colored the little nubs on its head red to sort of emulate crystals, and the shoulders on each of the Imposas bear various lumps, almost like spikes. These exist on the regular Imposa, but I thought it looked better if they were red, like the crystals growing from the red Imposa. I went ahead and took a little bit of Rust Monster Orange, so that I can go ahead and dot some of the eyes on the Impusa. In the game, the Impusa's eyes are on the outside, sort of like a praying mantis's head. The skull in the center doesn't actually have any eyes in the game, and it's just a hollow socket. However, on these models, you do see something of an eye on the center skulls. I ignore them, but you're free to go ahead and color them however you wish. Next up, we're going to wash the Impusa models in a combination of shadow and brown wash. I go ahead and I mix together a little concoction of brown, black, as well as water. I do one part brown, two parts black, and three part water. I end up using two drops of brown, four drops of black, and six drops of water. With this combination, you should get a very sinister, nasty looking coating on the Impusa models that uh, does well to mimic their appearance in the game. This was actually not enough shading for all of the models, and I ended up having to go back and mix up some more. And for two of the models, I kind of lazied out and just used straight brown wash, which ended up not looking too different, but it didn't have the same darkness that it would have had if it had the brown wash in it. You want to evenly distribute all the wash on the model to ensure an even coat. If the wash starts pulling anywhere undesirable, or in one of the flat parts of its body, you want to try to use your brush to pull it away.
After leaving the wash to dry for about half an hour, I come back with the lich skin green and go ahead and begin highlighting the muscle and various parts on the Infosa models. Now to do this, I simply water down the lich skin a little more than I would normally. I go back and I highlight anywhere I think that the light would touch, accentuating the musculature of the creature. I go ahead and I hit various bony parts that are sticking out, such as the knees and the various chitinous pieces on its body. I am very careful to avoid going into any dark recesses, ruining the shadow effect. If you want, now is a great time to go ahead and clean up any red or blue that got out of place. While this part is not necessary, it definitely adds to the effect of your models, giving them more depth. You can add a little bit of highlight around the eye sockets on the creature. There are several of them, so you have room. There's plenty of flat parts of the skull which would catch the light. I also made sure to get around the mandibles to just kind of add a little bit of life to them. Along the tail end of the creature, I make sure to give a little bit of highlight on the edges of each segment just to make them catch the light a little and add a little bit of color to this rather simple creature. In the end, this is what the models turned out to be. I later went back and uh, used a bit of black to sharpen up the bases so that they didn't have any excess color spilling out onto them. If you want, you could also go and dry brush the creature a little, put adding a bit of blue back to the wings. And with that, you just repeat that process 12 times and you have a set of Imposa models. Up next, I'll be doing the Hell Antonora, which come in a pack of four. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Like and subscribe if you want to follow the series, and I'll see you in the next one.